Hello everyone, welcome to Pop Ball's Workshop. I have a lot planned for this video, and I'm going to divide it into three different segments. The first segment, we're going to talk about the X-Tool D1 laser and the alignment problem that so many people have had. And I'm going to give you some simple solutions. And to be able to demonstrate it, we're going to engrave some pencils. Very small text and rather tricky to align, but I'm going to make it easy for you. In the second segment, I'm going to show you the Sculpin S9 laser and the X-Tool D1 laser and put them on a side-by-side -side test with the slate coasters and see how they compare. And in the last segment, I'm going to continue with the Sculpin S9 laser and use the rotary roller. So this is going to be an exciting video. You're not going to want to miss this. So let's get into it. The first pencil that we're going to engrave is just your standard yellow pencil. And I want to be able to put the name right here on one of the sides. The first thing that you need to be able to do is get your calipers out and let's measure and see exactly how much room that you have. On the millimeters, you have about 2.8 millimeters that you can do the height of these letters. So that's what we're going to use. As far as the alignment, no fancy jigs. This is just a scrap piece of plywood that I have taped down and I'm going to be able to set the pencil right here and we'll be able to engrave this just fine. And I'll be able to do multiple pencils very easily without the fancy jigs. Now for this demonstration today, I'm gonna to be using the light burn software. Most of you know now that the X-Tool D1 laser supports the light burn software. And of course, when we make the transition over to the Sculpin S9 laser, I'll continue to use the light burn software and we're gonna use the exact same settings. When you turn the X-Tool on, you're going to get this grid line here. Now this is the center point of the project. Now your laser is over here. It is not lined up directly underneath this grid point, And that's okay, and that's what confuses so many people. The software is already built in to accommodate the distance from this center point over to the center point of the laser. So that's where the people get a lot of confusion from the very beginning. So if I have this pencil right where I want it, then I can just bring this over and the first thing we're gonna do is get the Z height set. With the X tool, you have this little lever right there, which is really nice. And you can put that right over the project and then we can lower that down. It has a screw on the left hand side and I'm just going to loosen this screw, lower it down till it touches and tighten it back. So the Z height is now set and I can put that back up in there and it has a little magnet in there to keep it in place. Now using this grid line, you can actually center this right now before we ever even turn on light burn. Because this line needs to be right in the center of this pencil. So I can slide this over and I can see that this is not quite centered. So I can just literally move the machine instead of moving the plywood right there to that point to center it. And see how that's centered in this area. Now let's slide it over to the other end and you can see how it kind of just rolled right off of the edge of the pencil. We can bring this right back and center it again. And that looks real good. But let's just double check it. Slight movement there. There we go. So that's gonna be real good. So just by moving the machine in relationship to our template, you can get it perfectly aligned. Next, let's go ahead and open up Lightburn, and I want to show you another way that works extremely well. For this demonstration, I'm not going to do anything fancy. All I'm going to do is just type out Papa's Workshop, and I'm going to come over to the text line right there, and we're going to put it in, and I'm going to type out Papa's Workshop. 
And then I'm gonna go back to the selection tool and that takes care of it. That's the text that we're gonna be using. And like I said, nothing fancy on this. So this is on the black layer and I wanna make this as a fill. That way you're gonna be able to see it. I'm gonna change this to an output. Now we said we needed this at 2.8 millimeters. So I'm gonna go ahead and lock this because I wanna keep everything in proportion. And I'm gonna put the height in millimeters. I'm gonna click this right there. That changes this to millimeters. And then I'm going to put this at the 2.8 millimeters. Then I'm gonna come right over here to this box and click on that. And that gives it to you. Now what I want to do is change this over to the blue layer. And that already was set up as the fill. Next, I'm gonna come up and I wanna make a rectangle. And it doesn't have to be anything fancy. We are gonna put this on the black layer and we're gonna make this a line. So there we have it. And I wanna be able to have this right on top of it. But you know what? The easiest way to do it is to highlight everything and then just use this little bullseye tool right there and put it in there. And that takes care of it. It is now perfectly aligned. I know now that this is from the 2.932, that's this black line right there. And that's okay, because that's gonna give me the alignment that I want. Now normally I would take this black line and put it on layer 29. Because what I have on line 29 is a line and I have it set up where it's gonna be running to 508 millimeters uh, per minute with a half percent power. And it's set for three passes. And that way I can actually run this job with my output turned off on my blue. And then I can actually get it aligned perfectly where I want it. So let's go ahead and do that. This line I know right now is very hard to see in the camera, but that is set up. The blue for the Papa's workshop is turned off. That will not output. So now at this point, we're gonna turn this one on. You can maybe barely see it in the camera now. And we're gonna run this job. And by running this, we're gonna move over to the machine again and get the alignment perfect. Now, before I start the job, I wanna go ahead and frame it. And when it frames, it's gonna follow that rectangle line exactly around where it needs to be. Now, it's gonna be using this red grid line to be able to do it. These crosshairs are gonna mark out exactly where it's gonna go. Now, this is what confuses a lot of people. Notice when I hit the frame button, it moves to the left first, and then it goes ahead and does the framing. That's the confusing part. And if you don't like that location, we can slide it down some. Let's say if we put it right there, and we'll slide that pencil right up against that wood. And if you find that your pencil wants to roll, let me give you a quick solution. You can take another little piece of scrap wood and just line it up right there and touch the pencil. And that's all that's necessary. So let's go ahead and frame this again using the red grid line. Now I want you to notice one more time when it moves, it's going to move to the left first and then go ahead and do that framing. If we don't like that location, see, we can move it down some. And let's do it again. Remember the red crosshairs is actually making the border. Don't look at where the laser head is. Look at where the red crosshair is. Now that gives you exactly where it's going to be. Now I've intentionally moved this a little bit off center because I want to be able to show you now the other way to be able to line it by actually running the job with those three passes on that extreme low power. So that's right along the bottom edge and that's coming across the top edge. And that looks pretty good. A slow speed and three passes gives you plenty of time to be able to get perfect alignment. So just by moving the machine left and right, it makes it where you can align it exactly where you want it. Now it's time, let's go ahead and engrave this pencil. Now I'm turning off the layer which is the rectangle, and I'm turning on the blue layer, which is the text. And then I can just go ahead and hit start, 
and make sure you're wearing your glasses but this is going to engrave now and this will only just take a few seconds to be able to do so there we have it let's take a look at it so that looks real good we can actually reduce the power on that because that's a little bit more than what we needed so let's go ahead and drop another pencil in now we'll put it in at the same point and we'll change the power we'll reduce it a little bit and we'll run a second pencil in the lightburn software i have this one highlighted which is my blue fill line i can come down to the library and i had used the dark and so i'm going to go ahead and switch over to the medium i'm going to apply that to this and you can see how it changed the numbers up here now i don't need to do any additional alignment all i need to be able to do is come down to the laser and be able to hit start so let's move the camera back over there and i'll do that now and with this simple template of nothing more than a scrap piece of plywood to hold it in place and another little scrap wood so it doesn't roll works pretty good now i want to do one more test with it and show you what happens when we work with a round pencil and just like that it's done and that actually looks better we could actually switch this to a light if you wanted to now it's just slightly off of the center and you can see how this is a little bit to the top edge. So I could actually remove the machine just ever so slightly and correct that. But at this point, let's just switch over to a different pencil. We're going to put this pencil in. Now this pencil is larger in diameter. So we're going to just come up here and do the same thing. We're going to get the Z height set that set we'll put this away we'll slide that back up to the center of the pencil and i want to put that should put it right about here i think would be good let's frame it first using the three passes this way we can double check to make sure we got it exactly where we want it notice also that the red crosshair disappears when you're doing this framing this is actually running a job rather than framing. And I think I'm going to slide this down a little bit and put it right about there. And I think that looks pretty good. So very slight movement and we're done. And that crosshair puts it right back at the center point. So now let's turn off that layer, turn back on the blue fill layer and engrave. Again, the red crosshairs disappear doing the job. So being able to switch from one pencil size to another and be able to correct and change the alignment is not a difficult task. And there's no need for any special templates. Now I'm getting ready to put the names on 12 different pencils for a class here locally. And I'm going to use this same exact process to be able to do that now i'm not going to show you the name because these are kids that are in a school setting and i don't have permission to show you their names but i wanted to be able to show you the technique so there it is and that looks real good i like that i had 12 pencils to be able to personalize with the kids names on them i'm not showing these up close because they are individual kids names as far as the alignment using the X tool, a D1 is still a very simple operation. The letters on this are only three and a half millimeters tall, and the alignment worked out perfect. You really don't need a fancy jig to be able to engrave these pencils, but this works just extremely well. And here I went ahead and did some engraving with the tiles, and instead of one piece of wood, I used two to be able to create just a very simple template. And this is really all you need if you got a small job. Now here I had to do a total of four of the coasters. And this simple jig worked fine. These coasters are being made for my son who's donating them to the sheriff's department for 
an annual event that they have. So I've got the two finished there and you can see the third one uh, almost finished and the fourth one's ready to drop in and be able to engrave it. Like I said, a simple jig like this does not have to be fancy, complicated. It just needs to be able to mark the correct location so that you can start. And then it saves the setup. But literally you drop the coaster in and you hit start. And of course on the back I just did the same thing. I flipped it over and put the logo of Papa's Workshop. And these are ready to go out the door. You also notice that I'm having fun with the Sculpin X9 laser and also the X-Tool D1 laser. I wanted to be able to see if there was really any difference as far as the setup. And actually in this particular case I used the exact same setup. And to make it even more fun I didn't move the plywood template, those two pieces of wood there. I just simply picked up one machine and put the other machine down and then I aligned it the same exact way but instead of moving the template I moved the machine on the X and Y axis until I had the alignment perfect. And easy as easy can be. So it was an easy swap out. I can pull this tile out and the logo looks absolutely fantastic and then I'll take the next one and I'll just drop it in place and I can hit start. And that makes it very, very simple and easy with this type of uh, simple jig with just two pieces of wood. Now because these coasters are different thicknesses, you do have to check this. And I did have to either lower it or raise it up depending on the thickness of these coasters. A little bit crazy, but that's something that you do have to do. From there, just hit start and I'm ready to continue. Now it's interesting, I used the exact same setup in Lightburn for the S9 as well as the X-Tools D1 laser. And that was a fun little experiment to see if there was any difference required as far as setting changes, and there really was not. Both of them engraved very, very nicely. I have no complaints whatsoever. They were just spot on for doing exactly what I wanted. A number of you have asked that I do some side-by-side -side comparisons. So here is the S9 um, Sculpin and the X-Tool D1 doing a side-by-side -side comparison using the slate coasters. The Sheriff logo was on the front side and on the back side I did the Pawpaw's Workshop logo. And both of them looked absolutely fantastic. And now once I finished all the coasters, I moved on to using the rotary roller setup and I did some engraving of the glasses. Now these were a little bit tricky to do because of the shape of them. And no matter what I did, they still wanted to slide down the, um, the roller itself. As far as the preparation, I did paint the glasses ahead of time with the black tempera paint as I have shown in the videos before. And I used the old pill bottle just to be able to hold it in place to keep it from sliding down. And that actually worked pretty well. Now in this case, I did not put the paper inside of the glass as I have done before. And you can see how that light reflects right on through the glass. I want to thank everybody for watching the video today. And I hope this helps to explain how to be able to do the correct alignment with the x D1 laser. And of course, doing the side-by-side -side comparison with the D1 and the Sculpin S9. I thought that was very interesting with the slate. And if you found this interesting and helpful, please go ahead and give me a thumbs up. And while you're there, please subscribe to the channel and hit the little bell notification. That really does help a lot. So until next time, I look forward to seeing each and every one of you in the shop working on whatever project. So bye-bye now.